Butch had asked is, can you explain buying deep in the money? Are you in favor of using them? Uh, buying leaps deep in the money calls. Okay. Well, we talked a moment ago about the married put position. And we talked about, I was selected an August option, Butch, a put option for the married put that was at least 168 days out. That's because that was the furthest that was offered uh, when looking at that one SPAC that we are doing for Brad. Why would I do that? Why am I buying a far out in time put? Why would I consider even buying further out in time? Well, it's because of a couple of the three very core principles of options investing that we apply every day to the radioactive trading techniques, but it really applies to any option strategy. And the one rule is, is that when you're buying options, and this is called the ATM bell curve, Butch. And so if a stock's trading at 40, right here is the 40 strike. On any expiration, Butch, closer term, further out in time, the at the money option has the highest time value. This is where I want to sell out of the money or in the money related to a call or reverse related to a put, but in the money or out of the money is where I want to be buying to pay into less time value, the at the money bell curve. So buying in the money calls is good. Number two, the time decay curve. I didn't want to go into that section, but the time decay curve here shows us the options decay. If I buy an option that's 180 days out in time here, and then 120 here, 150, it's probably closer than that. And then probably here would be 90, here is 60. And then the last 30 days, you see the major fall off. This is the last 30. What is this showing me? This is showing me that assuming all things stay the same, Butch, and then we, they never do. <laughs> We've, I don't know if that'd be a good thing or a bad thing if we found the stock that just didn't move and implied volatility and volatility didn't change much. But if all things remain the same, and if they even seem relatively consistent, if I buy an option 180 days out of time, I'm not going to start seeing any rapid time decay till 60 days away. But if I buy an option that's 60 days out in time, I'm going to start seeing rapid time decay almost immediately in the first couple of weeks, in the last 30 days. It's drastic. And that also leads to a third concept, and that is the options pricing. You've heard many people say, Butch, when they're talking about covered calls, naked puts, bull put credit spreads, bear call credit spreads, that you want to sell shorter term. Because when you sell week by week by week or month by month by month, you get a higher annualized return. Because the option that is six months out in time is not six times the cost. So it doesn't do me a lot of good to buy a stock and sell an eight month out option when I could sell month by month by month and make double what I might be able to do eight months out in time. You get a higher annualized return selling month by month or week by week, shorter time frames, which means you get a lower cost per day. Even though you're paying more up front, you get a lower cost per day buying further out in time. So to the general discussion of what you mentioned, I see no fault in buying far out in time in the money calls. In fact, that's what I would likely do to start a diagonal calendar spread, what some people refer to as a poor man's covered call. But as you all know, I don't like using that term. But you got to be careful about some things. And where I'm, what I mean by that is that there is such a thing as too deep in the money, even with the married put and even with long calls. It's not that you won't profit if the stock moves up. It's that you're likely battling something. Let's go out to June here on Apple, 469 days away. We'll consider this a leap in this case. And actually, this one isn't going to, oh, I just want calls. Butch wanted to know just about calls. Fantastic. And this one is beyond my expectations, which is great. So what do you mean by deep in the money? Okay, so you might be looking for something with a delta of maybe, point, I gotta go to the large chain, I'm sorry, but you might be looking for a delta of maybe 0 0.9, 0 0.95, something that's gonna react one-to-one -one with the stock. And for Apple, this isn't bad. This isn't as bad as I normally see. But going into the higher delta ranges, 0 0.95, 0 0.96, but look at these options, the 50 strike call on Apple, 7203. I mean, there's open interest. That's great. 
there's a good amount of open interest. There's no regular volume. Normally, Butch, when I pull up a, a stock with 300, 400 to 600 days out of time, you're looking deep in the money here. I mean, consider it. We're 70% in the money on somebody, 65% in the money with the stock trading at 120. We're looking at the 50 strikes. Those are the deltas of 0.9. You tend not to see a lot of open interest. You tend to see very little daily activity. And Apple seems to be a different monster right now um, with the activity that's going on here. But that's to get the deltas that you want. Let me take something more uh, less common. DAR, one of the positions I'm in that's been showing uh, high movement. I can only go out to October. There's no leap there. But you see here, going into the deltas of 0 0.95, zero open interest, two open interest, zero open interest at 50, and the stock's at 73. Then you start to see some here, but we're at delta of 0 0.82, 0 0.76, 0 0.70. So I express this to many of my investors in two ways. And the investors that are interested in the Mary Put and the Bulletproof uh, radioactive trading techniques, Butch, they say, well, why don't you just mimic the stock by buying an in-the-money call that's so deep in the money that you have a delta of 0.9 or 0.95? And it's because commonly on the stocks I'm looking at, I'm creating the market for those positions. And it's very difficult. There's no guarantee I'm going to get filled at a good price. I can see I want a mid-price of 39.45 here, but market maker is going to push me towards this 41.90. I can guarantee you that because I'm essentially creating the market to get the delta I want. Depending on the stock, I, I, I'm admit I'm shocked by the activity in Apple. I mean, I know Apple's more heavily traded than, than this little seventy-three dollar stock we're looking at here, um, but it's a good stock. You know, it's, 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 it's performing extraordinarily well for me. But again, that's the balance you fade. To me, my experience historically, since I started working with Ernie, you know, two thousand four, two thousand three, two thousand three, two thousand two. I the idea is there saying, yes, if I'm going to buy an in the money leap call, I want a delta of 0.95 or 0.99 because I want to mimic as close to one to one gain with the stock without paying the cost of the stock. And, you know, with Apple, of course, we didn't want to buy the stock at 121. So we're buying a leap call 469 days out. We saw the 0.95 delta at 50 and we're paying $75 for it. So, yeah, we've got some good savings. We're not quite half the price, but. We're paying a lot for that intrinsic to get the delta that we want. But normally, when you push the delta to be that high, you don't see the activity that you want. That also may mean it's more difficult to exit the trade or to roll that call uh, if you need to roll down defensively or if you need to roll up as well. But you're on the right path. And, and we showed why with those three principles there. I want to buy in the money typically when I'm buying puts for protection on my married puts or calls, of course, to mimic stock ownership. I want to buy further out in time, absolutely. I get a lower cost per day, and I get the lower time value decay in my favor. I'm going to see a much lower time decay for the first 100 days I'm in that position. If you're at 469, you're going to see a much smaller time decay, assuming the stock's staying the same and volatility remains the same for a few months. Whereas if you just bought 20, 30, 60 days out in time, that time decay you paid into is going to rapidly decline. And of course, going deeper in the money means you don't have as much time value. But again, now that comes into that play of fighting the low open interest and the low activity, which may not give you the best fill price that you're looking for. All right. So Butch, hopefully you'll see that in the replay. And I'll make sure to email you that we did record it. and We'll get the replay up for you as soon as possible. Those are my thoughts. And in general, if you go to our basic long call search, and this is Ernie's Bollinger Band screen that we're going to take a look at as a default that comes up usually when I go into long calls, unless I changed it. Ah, there's our low volatility and IV search. Let me just pull up the Bollinger Band default for you here, Butch. Now, as you can see, this one is looking more for a quick jump with the Bollinger Band trend. So we're only going shorter term to take advantage of shorter term movements at or around the Bollinger Band breakout. But in the sample searches, we have other ones here, calls to buy, current option volume, and those are looking further out in time. Another advantage, of course, of buying the leap calls, similar to buying a further out put if I'm looking to the married put structure with single digit risks, if things aren't going the way that you wanted, you know, they're going up, they're going down a little bit, you've retained most of the time value, a management technique you might have 
to cut down your cost basis, cut down the exposure, cut down the risk, is you could sell to close that June one after 30 or 60 days and move it closer in time. And you take money off the table while still having the right to buy that stock at 50 or 60. You just have less time now. But by doing that, you give yourself less exposure if the market turns against you.